Have you ever heard someone tell a story about an incredible, powerful, transformative moment in their life? And in the summarizing of, of that moment, they say something like, and then all of a sudden, God showed up. But I have, I've heard that multiple times in a variety of turns of phrases. Maybe it's not exactly like that every time, but, but I've heard it. And, and these kind of stories are, they're always, they're always moving, right? They're moving, but I, I wonder if it leaves you with the same kind of questions that it often leaves me with in the end. And, and that's, that's the questions like, if, if all of a sudden God showed up, where was God before that moment? If all of a sudden God showed up, does that mean that prior to that moment, that powerful moment, God was somewhere else entirely? And if God was somewhere else, and then God all of a sudden showed up for, for this friend of mine, for this person in this moment, why didn't God show up all of a sudden for all of those other people and all those other moments who could have used God just all of a sudden showing up for them? And I, I think you probably know what I mean. It, it just can become quite this this rabbit hole of questions that circulate through our mind. But, but have you ever noticed that in these kind of big life moments, those incredible, powerful, transformative, abounding in pain and abounding in, in, in joy kind of moments that we talk a heck of a lot about where God is and not as much about who God is. In these moments, we pray for God to be with us, for God to come near us. We talk about those amazing moments in our lives being this God moment, or this God thing. And all of this seems to reinforce this subtle yet powerful belief that God is somewhere else and then comes here into this world, into our lives from time to time to do God sorts of things. And the problem with this is that it, it leaves us with all those sorts of questions that tend to flood our mind, like the ones I mentioned, endless questions about when and where and why God chooses to act or not act. But the truth is we don't know why or where or when. We don't know why the Holocaust happened or, or why the person we love has cancer out of other people or why our marriage fell apart or why we had that miscarriage or why so many people have died in 2020 from coronavirus. None of us can say why God decided to come here and act in one moment for one person and not for another person. And, and anyone who can tell you why <laughs> should honestly not be trusted. Because, because we don't know the answers about when and where and why God chooses to act or not act. There is, I believe though, another way to see God where we talk more about who God is rather than where God is in these moments. That, and that is to see God, to know God, to sense God as the God who is with us. That inherently a part of who God is is this withness, this right here-ness, this right now-ness. This is who God is. God is with. And throughout our lives, throughout our experience of God's witness, there are going to be highs, yes, and there are going to be lows, yes. <laughs> and then there are going to be those normal, average, everyday moments too. Like, like just washing the dishes or, or making breakfast or, or walking the dog or giving your neighbor's kid a high five when you're out in the driveway, when you seem to quite unusually and yet still ordinarily catch a glimpse of the depth and the dimension and, and the fullness of God's character and witness. Those kind of moments. Sometimes these moments, whether 
life highs or lows or all the ordinary everyday moments in between where you mysteriously get a deeper glimpse at God's withness. Sometimes these moments, sometimes they catch us off guard, like they sneak up behind us and all we know to do is use words like all of a sudden God showed up. But sometimes you, you find yourself slowing down and becoming gripped with this certain stillness in these moments, like your heart is, is slamming on the brakes while it whispers in your ear, hey, Michelle, this matters. This moment is significant. Slow down, Michelle, pay attention, Michelle. Like, like your soul is, is trying to say, to, to, to take a picture of this moment because the realization that whatever is going on here right now is worth capturing. I've had those moments, have you? And, and when we try to describe these moments, we use words like transcendent and we talk about something being out of this world or being sublime. But what we're really talking about is, is this awareness of God's witness that this moment, this moment is what it is, but it's also more than that. At the, at the, the same time, it's something so much more. It, it's a meal, but it's, it's more than a meal. It was a conversation, but it was also more than a conversation. It was, it was a memory or a moment, but it was also more than, than any other memory or moment. Have you had these kind of experiences? It's these moments where we're fully present, taking in every tactile dimension of the experience, and yet your visceral, physical experience drew you higher, farther, beyond that same experience into an utter awareness of the God who is with. This kind of moment, this kind of experience, the ancient Hebrews, it turns out, had a way of talking about this, this kind of experience. The Israelites believed that, that everything that exists, exists because of this explosive, expansive, surprising, creative energy that surges through all things, holding all things together, giving the universe its life and depth and fullness. And they called this cosmic electricity, this expressed power, this divine energy, they called it the Ruach of God. They believe that this divine ruach, that it flows from God, because as the writer of Psalms puts it, that the whole earth is God's and all of it infused with ruach, crammed with this restless creative energy full of this life, electrified by the God who continually is with us, renewing the face of the earth. And because they they believed the Ruach of God. They didn't, they didn't talk about a world that went on day after day doing its thing while, while they discussed whether or not there was a God or where God was. Does God exist? Might or might not be near to us. No, they, they talked instead about this life, this vitality, this creativity, this the stars and the rocks and the stories and the food and the tears and the sea animals and all having this singular, common, creative, sustaining source whom they called God, who powers and energizes and sustains it all, this God who is with us. And, and, and while they understood this Ruach energy to be as wide as the universe and powerful enough to fuel and animate and sustain even the blanket of stars in the sky, they also understood this Ruach to be as intimate and personal as the breath I'm taking, the breath you just took. In fact, they, they often referred to this Ruach as breath. Which brings us to our scripture today. 
where Jesus is also talking about this same breath. This breath which Jesus calls spirit and advocate in our text today. The word spirit, though, can bring with it uh, a number of different associations in our world, right? That a lot of associations that, that the Hebrews never intended, that Jesus never intended by this word spirit. Have you noticed how, how most of the time when we talk about spirit, we seem to talk about it as something kind of abstract, something less real, less tangible, less substantial, something non-physical, supernatural, relegated to the realm of religion only for those people who believe those things, something that may or may not exist. The thing is that, that for the Hebrews, Ruach doesn't, doesn't divide the world like that. When, when the Hebrews talked about this breath, this, this Ruach, this spirit, they weren't talking about an, an abstract realm somewhere else. <laughs> they were talking about that, that, that like gigantic megaphone that's parked one millimeter from your ear announcing to you clearly unmistakable sounds that this is real, Michelle. It is happening. It is, it's not to be denied, not to be di dismissed. Pay attention, Michelle. When the, when the Hebrews and Jesus talked about the spirit, as, as the poet of Genesis does in the first few lines of the Bible, they were, they were talking about the very life force that brings everything into existence, the presence of God within the world dwelling in every created being, present to everyone and everything all the time. Did you hear the words of Jesus today as, as Betty Lynn read them for us? Jesus says, I am sending you my spirit that will be with you forever, advocating for you, pushing you, energizing you, sparking in you that sense that there is, there is something more, something else, because God abides with me, in me. Jesus says, I will abide with you, in you. This is the spirit of truth Jesus is talking about. This is the breath of God. This is the ruach of God. Jesus says, and, 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 the, and the world doesn't know it. The world doesn't know it. The world sets up all these dichotomies between what is real and what is spirit. But you know this because you have paid attention, because you've been searching for, for where the breath of God is energizing the world. You know that I am with you when you feel me and when you don't in the highs and in the lows and in the big moments and in the everyday moments. You know I will not leave you orphaned, Jesus says, for I am the God who is with when you see me and when you don't, witness is who I am. This is the spirit I leave with you, not as the world gives. So don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't wonder whether, whether I'm with you. Don't wonder where I am, but feast on who I am. For you are not alone. The Jewish people and Jesus in today's text spoke of this presence of God in everything, all places, events, and, and, and beings. Like how the psalmist writes, you know these words, you've heard them before. Where, where can I go from your spirit, God? Where, oh, where can I flee from your presence, God? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there also. This is the God who is with. Which leads me back to, to the heart of God's character. That there is this inherent withness to God. With us, around us, beside us 
present with us in every single moment. The question then, friends, or the challenge then, or the invitation then is for us, for you, for me, to become more and more the kind of people who are aware of the divine presence attuned to the Ruach present in the, the depths of each and every moment, seeing God in more and more and more people and places and events each day, every day, being attuned to the God who is with. I want you to hear from someone in our congregation now who, who knows so intimately the God who has been with her. She has a powerful story to, to share with you. Will you, will you listen in to Mia today? <laughs> 